Welcome back to Morning Mika. We're just a few weeks away from the Forbes and Know Your Value 3050 Summit in Abu Dhabi. It's a global event from March 5th through the 8th over International Women's Day. The event brings together generations of women, including from both the 30 under 30 and 50 over 50 lists. We're going to hear from former Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, singer Shania Twain, personal finance expert Susie Orman, and so many more. And Huma will also be hearing from a number of under 30 speakers. Take us through some of the highlights and why hearing from this demographic is so important. Well, this, this is a demographic that is breaking through, that they're doing things that, you know, uh, uh, perhaps um, some of us would have liked to have done 15 years ago. I put myself in that category. So I'll start with Catherine Homuth is joining us, and she is the founder of Sheer Tex. Um, I could have used her yesterday when I had a rip in my pantyhose because she has used science and technology to create a brand of, uh, of, of tights that are basically indestructible. Uh, I think we could all use a pair. And I'm really looking forward to hearing what she has to say. We announced last week that Maitri Ramakrishnan is coming. She's a young Canadian uh, actress in the you know, best, one of the you know, most popular shows, Never Have I Ever. Uh, can't wait to hear from her young, dynamic, feisty, uh, you know, just the idea of her and Mindy Kaling uh, having this kind of mentorship relationship is exactly the kinds of conversations and relationships that we like to highlight uh, at the summit. And finally, we have Drea Okeke come. Uh, I could certainly learn a thing or two from her. She is a Nigerian-American engineer turned um, influencer. She uses her platform to just have a global, national conversations, how to help people with their mental health, how to guide people in how to walk in this increasingly um, challenging world. Just the energy, the excitement that all three of these women are going to bring to the conversation. Uh, it is just a few weeks away, and you can, you can feel the energy in the air. I can't wait. You can go to knowyourvalue.com to find out more on how to get involved now. It's time to answer some of your questions. And we told us you could ask us anything, so let's get started. Amira on Instagram writes, I'd like the panel to address a four-day work week as one solution toward equity for women in the workplace. How can this help level the playing field, considering the gender imbalance that persists in caregiving responsibilities and presence in leadership roles? Simone, can you see this happening? A four-day work week. I could see a four-day work week happening, but you know what I think would really address equity for women in the workplace? Mm -hmm. Paying us what we are yeah. worth. Addressing mm -hmm. the pay gap, okay? That's what's really going to... Don't give me another day off so I can watch my <laughs> stepson. Pay me. <laughs> I love that. I mean... Damn right. I would just add, Mika, they, they, I mean, a four-day work week it would be great for so many women. What I've experienced as a working mom is flexibility is really the key because every woman needs something different. And when I went back to the White House when I was pregnant with my daughter and had a newborn and I was the communications director, I basically left at 5.30 every day because I wanted to pick her up from daycare. That wasn't a four-day work week, um, but that was flexibility for me. Um, so I would say for me, and I think for a lot of women who are balancing what Simone was referencing, it's about flexibility and knowing we're like, we're not just here to punch the clock. We're contributing. We have seats at the table. We're running things, and we need you to make it possible for us. All right, let's go to our next question. Linda on Instagram wants to know what made each of you go into media and journalism. I'll go first. My dad, uh, when he was serving as national security advisor, took me to all of his interviews, to Nightline, to meet the press, to whatever. And I think he thought I was listening to every important word he was saying. And instead, I was like, the camera angle, the producer, who does that? I want to do that. So I knew from a very early age that this is exactly what I wanted to do. Simone, why did you make the jump? Oh, because I think um, what happens on television, what people say on television, is, is some of the most important things that pe people are saying and doing anywhere. When I worked at the White House, um, I know people like to say, oh, 
television is going away, TV's not that important, but when things happen in the world, people turn on the television. And when I worked at the White House, just in my office, just like in Jen's office, there was a TV with four screens, and we cared about what the chirons were. We cared about what people were saying. You know, I would pick up the phone and I would call. So I am just happy to be in a space and place where I can lend my voice in a very you know, powerful and, uh, frankly, pivotal moment for our country and the world. And I get to hang out with you guys on a regular basis. I like that. <laughs> our crew. We also heard from Nora on Instagram, and she says, getting personal, what's your favorite thing to say when you're really good and ticked off? Well, I, I don't know if you can say that. Uh, Jen? What can we say? Uh, can, take that one? <laughs> can we I know. say things? I mean, I will I say know. when I'm really ticked off, I say, like, what the actual F, you know? Yeah. Or are you yeah. effing kidding me? So it's rare. I mean, yeah. if I get super ticked off, people better hide under their desks because it is it is mm -hmm. rare. Um, but, yes, I, I curse <laughs> a lot more in my um, private life, I would say, than I tried to on television since I keep saying effing here. <laughs> Puma, any four-letter words out of your mouth? Well, unfortunately, those my four-letter words are very similar to Jen uh, and Simone's, probably. <laughs> but I find that when I'm really angry, I get very quiet. And so mm -hmm. a lot of it, Ooh, I simmering. internalize. Probably not healthy, but... Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I relate words. to that, mm. Huma. I relate to that. A quiet okay. Huma. A quiet me, if I'm staring at you, means I'm pissed off. So I don't know. A quiet Huma is not a good Huma. <laughs> no. Okay. One last question. Um, Linda writes, Mika, you and Joe are my favorite couple. What's your favorite date night, dinner, movie? Uh, I don't think I've actually been to a movie theater in years. I would wow. say in bed by 6 p.m., eating pizza in bed um, <laughs> with our dogs and cats and going to sleep. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, we get up at four in the morning for this show. So if we could have a night off just to like be in bed, is that like a bad thing to say? No, that sounds know. great. No. That's real. <laughs> yeah. I second I love the it. ice cream and pizza. Yeah. And I have my, I have like a humidifier mist, my sound mm. machine on. Mm -hmm. Joe plays Beethoven. It's in the animal. Oh, love it's it. so nice. Anyhow, love a sound machine. Love night. a sound machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have it on the beach. All right. We'll do this again next week, shall we? Uh, if you didn't have a chance to ask your question, as you can see, you can ask anything. Head to Know Your Value on Instagram, Facebook, X, or LinkedIn right away. That does it for Morning Mika. We'll be back here on YouTube and Peacock. See you soon.